Amen. Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, praise the Lord for that, Miss Pat. All right. Um, we're, we studied last week uh, in chapter uh, 28, uh, and we looked at Saul consults the witch of Endor or the medium, and we discussed all of the aspects of, of that and how, uh, you know, uh, she did not, uh, as it appeared, uh, just conjure up Samuel from the dead, that there was some uh, inner workings that were going on there that uh, were some uh, kind of uh, trickery or whatever. When she actually seen Samuel, she was shocked uh, there. Uh, and, and so we've seen how there were some aspects uh, that were involved uh, with, with that uh, that doesn't lead people, uh, should not lead people anyway, uh, to go and try to call up people from the dead and all that. This was an act of God that was specifically done uh, you know, uh, for, for the time that we were studying. Uh, so we've seen, though, uh, as we went through uh, that chapter, um, uh, that David was in this situation uh, with Achish, the, uh, the king of Gath, that he had, where he had been, and he had been going out, as we've seen a couple weeks ago, and raiding these places, and he was really developing this relationship, and Achish had told him, you're going to go with me, uh, and you're going to fight alongside of me. You're going to be my servant, uh, and all of this. And that kind of sets us up for uh, chapter 29, uh, where there's only 11 verses in this chapter, uh, and it sets us up for what... Uh, uh, is about to take place, and, and again, we looked at last week that David is in a kind of a pickle because they're setting up to fight against Israel. And Achish has said, you're going to fight with me. So David is now fixing, he, he's been telling Achish that he was out there fighting against the Israelites, you know, in the Negev and, uh, and all of that of, of Judah. But he wasn't. He had lied uh, about that. But now he's going to have to be there with Achish alongside of him fighting, so he's, he's really uh, in a peculiar place. So let's look at the first five verses uh, here of chapter 29 uh, as David uh, gets sent back to Ziklag. All right, it says, The Philistines gathered all their forces at Aphek, and Israel uh, camped by the spring of Jezreel. As the Philistine rulers marched with their units of hundreds and thousands, David and his men were marching at the rear with Achish. The commanders of the Philistines asked, What about these Hebrews? Achish replied, Is this not David, who was an officer of Saul, king of Israel? He has already been with me for over a year, and from the day he left Saul until now, I have found no fault in him. But the Philistine commanders were angry with Achish and said, Send the man back, send the, send the man back, that he may return to the place you assigned him. He must not go with us into battle or he will turn against us during the fighting. How better could he regain his master's favor than by taking the heads of our own men? Isn't this the David they sang about in their dances? Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. So uh, what we're seeing here uh, is, is that, you know, uh, they're, here, they're, they're marching along, but they, it says they went, and the Philistines went uh, to Aphek here. Now, this was a common name used of various different places. It just simply means a fortress. Uh, so I've given you a map uh, in, your, in your notes and uh, show how God works. Jim was uh, looking at things, and he brought that map to me, and he said, hey, he said, yeah, this would be a good map for tonight. I said, that's the one I got. Uh, so, uh, so that's good. I, I believe I had it last week, too. I can't remember. I've had so many maps. But you can see where they put, where Ephraim is there in the middle, uh, and this is Aphek here. There's some other maps that would show you another Aphek that is kind of closer uh, in the north there to Jezreel. Uh, don't exactly know uh, where, it, where it was, uh, but this is the map that I'm showing you. Um, and so the, it, the Philistines would have settled there uh, at Aphek, and then you would have had the Israelites further north uh, there by the fountain of Jezreel. Um, and it says, when we take a look at uh, verse 2, as the Philistine rulers marched with their units of hundreds and thousands. So you, you get a sense of this progression, this orderly progression uh, of the military marching of their commanders, and then they had their regiments that were behind them. Uh, and you also have to re remember that in 
uh, Philistia, you had five cities. Uh, each city had a king. Achish is the king of Gath. He had Ekron and the others. Um, and so there were five Philistine kings, uh, rulers. They're, the Bible in different translations give varying different words to who these, uh, these, these men were. Uh, chieftains, princes, or I think princes are used, uh, commanders, kings, uh, and they kind of interchangeably will say that in different settings. Uh, but you had these five Philistine rulers. What we're seeing is these folks were marching along. Uh, David and his men now were kind of in the rear. They were back here with Achish and his pe people. They would have stood out, though. Uh, their armor was different. Their weapons were different. They looked different. Um, and so they stood out like a sore thumb, uh, really. And you see uh, that the Philistine commanders ask, what about these Hebrews? Yeah, What are these people doing here? And Achish replies, and he just identifies David, you know, uh, with this. Well, oh, yeah, what about these Hebrews? Well, this is David, you know, don't you know him? Um, and, and, and tells him, you know, that David was an officer and Saul's army and all of that as if the, they know who David is. They knew when they asked, uh, you know, and you're seeing this exchange and Achan's just, well, you know, this is David, uh, uh, this, this, this mighty person. I don't know that he was helping his case any and what he was saying here. I don't know that it was making them Philistine uh, commanders feel better uh, when, when he was saying that you know, he was a commander, you know, the Saul king of Israel. Uh, but he goes in and he says, he's already been with me for over a year. Now, different translations are going to put this very differently. I would encourage you when you really kind of study this out, you look at uh, a couple of translations, take a look at the King James, you look at New American Standard, you look at uh, the... Uh, the NIV here, and it'll say days, and it kind of gives it, it maybe a couple of years, it kind of gives a more broader uh, sense and how the, the translation was, uh, as he was saying, he, he was basically saying, he's been with me a while, he's been with me for days and some years uh, there, the NIV just puts it, boom, uh, he's been with me for, for over a year, because how long was David with Achish? We know this from the prior time, huh? All right, a year and four months, which is how many months? 16 months. All right, so he's, he's there 16 months. We have seen that, you know, before. So at this time, he's already been with Achish for over a year, and that's what he was saying. He was, Achish was looking at them. He's been with me for a while. He's been with me for a long time, okay? Uh, he wasn't trying to tell them. He's been with me for 12 months, 13 days, 4 hours, and 60 minutes, you know, which would have been 5 hours. Um, He's not saying that, but anyway, I just always point out to you when you can look at different translations and see just a little bit. The NIV puts it plain, but you see a little difference in how they translate it. But he says, he's been with me for over a year, and from, that, from the day he left, Saul, until now, I have found no fault in him. Now, Achish is stepping out on a limb here. This is the mighty man of David, you know, this mighty man. He's done all these things. His reputation precedes him. He's killed many Philistines. He has gone to Achish once before, remember? And when he was there, he, you know, started drooling all over himself and acting crazy, and Achish had him thrown out. He then went back and, and, and was accepted by Achish the second time. And he's gone out and lied as he was raiding after Achish has given him a whole town uh, for all of his uh, people to stay in. And he's, he lied and told him, well, I've been, you know, raiding these Philistine, I mean, these Israelite people. And then Achish was kind of, oh, you're going to be my servant forever. But he's really taken this stuff hook, line, and sinker this king has. He has bought this lie really, really good. Um, I found no fault in David this entire time, and 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 he and he, and he, tell, and he tells him, you know, that he's he's a, he's a good fellow. So again, he, you've got four other Philistine kings who's looking at you, asking you questions. Why are you have the enemy that we're fixing to go fight? You got six hundred of them with their leader David in our army. I'm thinking that they're not. This doesn't make sense. This wouldn't make sense to anybody. 
Um, and, and, but Achish is going, but listen, I'm saying he's good. Well, they didn't, they didn't really buy all that. It didn't satisfy the Philistine commanders, and they demanded that Achish send him back to Ziklag, you know, uh, and that he would not go into battle, uh, he nor his men. So a question I got in your notes, what was the reason they didn't want David or his men to fight with them? He would turn on them. Well, for one thing, the Israelites were in front of them. If David and his men were behind them, they could catch the Philistines in the middle. Pretty, pretty, pretty good observation of maybe uh, how, how they could have how they could have had them encircled. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. That's good. Very good. And that's what they said. They said, what better way for him to get back into Saul's good graces to regain his master's favor than taking the heads of our own men? You know, hey, that's good logic, isn't it? These other Philistine rulers were using their noggins. <laughs> I mean, Achish. Probably what David would have done. Well, I mean, you know, I'm not, they, they were on to something here, <laughs> okay? Achish is kind of being a little, it's a little weird how this, Achish may have a little mental problem because, I mean, David had been went and slobbered on himself and all that stuff, and he had him sent out, and all of this whole thing is just kind of very odd that this king would even have allowed him to come in. He gave him the whole town, and he's just buying this whole story. Uh, humanly, it doesn't make much sense, and it's certainly not making sense to these other people, uh, these, these other leaders. So, I say, why do you think Achish wanted David and his men to fight with him in the first place? So in, da in Achish's mind, why is he so hoodwinked into this? It will intimidate Saul. Huh? It will intimidate Saul. I've got your David here who killed 12,000. All you could kill was 1,000 men. What were you going to say? Okay, but what's, what's Achish gained from this? He, he's putting himself out here in a major way. He's got, there's got to be something in it for him. David's loyalty. Okay, but what's that going to make gain for him? What? Because there's, um, he could say he's fighting all these Israelites on occasion because, you know, he had an ace fighter to keep with him. He had, a, he had an ace fighter to keep with him, which gives him a gain over the Israelites, but... I think, I suspect, and I don't know, but I suspect there may be a little more to it. Think about what Achish can gain from having a man like David. To who? To the eyes of the Those other four. Yeah. He, he would have, but I will suggest to you, when you are one-fifth of the ruler of a mighty uh, uh, territory and nation like the Philistines, they're all fighting to somebody. Want, there's always the vacuum of who needs to be the top one, okay? Who's going to be the, I know we all are our kings of our city, but Gath is going to be the ruling city. It's like five political parties. Somebody's got to be the, the top, you know. And I think Achish went, oh my goodness, I have something they don't have. I've got David and who they know. He said, isn't this the one that they, they sing about? Saul has slain his thousands. David is ten, tens of thousands. Who are they going to fight? They're going to fight Saul. Achish is in his pocket. I mean, David is in Achish's pocket. If it goes the way Achish wants it to go, and every, they win this battle, he's going to come out because David was his servant. He's going to come out on top of all the other ones. I'm thinking when they're coming against him right now, he's like, oh, no, no, no. You can't. You know, it's like you got your prize fighter. And you got the other people coming and telling you they don't qualify because he's juiced up or something like that. He's like, wait, no, 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 really. I, I, I vouch for him. He's done. He, he did not take any steroids, I promise you. Uh, he's been good. He's been good. That's the only way for me that Achish, may, it makes sense. He was getting these spoils. He was getting some of those spoils David was bringing back 
from those places. He was benefiting. We talked about that economically. I think y'all brought that up uh, the, uh, last week. There was helping the economy of his, of his city and whatnot. So he, and, and then the might that David and his 600 additional warrior people were bringing uh, was, was, was really something Achish was looking at personally for himself. So that's why he was all in, all in for David. Now, David, though, is in a pickle, I say. Okay, because he's lied to get the favor of this king so he can kind of be safe from Saul. And he wasn't fighting against the Israelites, but now he's done too good of a job because his way out is here, but he's got this man fighting. No, 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 let him fight, let him fight, let him fight. This could go either way for David. He was about to be in a, in a, in a pickle, uh, as I say. Yes, yeah, it's at least the second time that he did not consult the Lord uh, and, and go to the, you know, uh, yes, he, did, he didn't go to the Lord. So that's where we stand, and that's where I'm suggesting to you was Achish's uh, hold, grasping, uh, trying to be the, the main leader, okay? Um, in verses 6 through 11, it says, so Achish... They, settling on defeat now because he's one of five. The four have voted it down, and or however it was. Uh, the, he, he's, uh, he's in the minority here. And uh, he says, So Achish called David and said to him, As surely as the Lord lives, you have been reliable, and I would be pleased to have you serve with me in the army. From the day you came to me until today, I have found no fault in you, but the rulers don't approve of you. Now turn back and go in peace. Do nothing to displease the Philistine rulers. But what have I done, asked David? What have you found against your servant from the day I came to you until now? Why can't I go and fight against the enemies of my lord the king? Achish answered, I know that you have been as pleasing in my eyes as an angel of God. Nevertheless, the Philistine commanders have said, he must not go up with us into battle. Now get up early, along with your master's servants, who have come with you, and leave in the morning as soon as it is light. So David and his men got up early in the morning to go back to the land of the Philistines, and the Philistines went up to Jezreel. <sighs> huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it, I do point out uh, here in the first bullet point down here, uh, uh, and I was going to put it up here earlier, when you, I mentioned there's several names they give to these rulers and whatnot. It is unclear whether Achish is simply talking to the other four kings or if he's talking to, there, there would have been levels of leadership. You had the, the, the kings and then there would have been some other, if you want to call them chieftains or whatnot, that would have been beneath uh, those kings commanding the armies and whatnot. And I'm fairly certain in my study of this, that it was a broad spectrum of the other four kings and the other commanders of the army that were coming to Achish going, no, okay? He wasn't just arguing with those four, uh, you know, kings there. And, and the vagueness of the wording that this used here, uh, this different than other places when the, when the princes are mentioned, kind of lends you to believe that it was the military commanders. It was the kings, and it was the joint chiefs of staff saying, no go, okay? Um, so Achish kind of knew this wasn't going to happen, whether it was just them four or whether it was a whole bunch of people. He was outvoted uh, is the point. Um, so why do you think, uh, is, what do you make, excuse me, of the exchange between David and Achish um, and the king's trust of David? So I, I really, I, I asked that question kind of broadly, but I want you to kind of really hone in on Achish is going, before he tells David anything, he's sweetening him up, you know. He says, as surely as the Lord lives, in verse 6, you have been reliable. I would be pleased for you to be a part, you know, to, to, fight, to fight in the army, serve with me in the army. And from the day, you know, I found no fault in you, uh, and all of this, but, but these rulers, that they don't approve of you, okay? Uh, so, and, and, and he tells him, you know, turn back and go in peace. Do not do anything to displease these rulers. What do you make of this interaction? Well, 
He thinks David may get mad. Well, yeah. So let so let's take it one person at a time. So let's think about Achish for a minute. Achish seems to be a little scared of David. You know, I don't know. He's or, or at least scared that David's going to make him look like a fool. He just said that I found no fault in him. He's all right. But when he goes back and tells him, he's like, oh, he may get real mad and start fighting against us. That's going to really make Achish look terrible, you know, in the minds of these other kings. So he's going, hey, look, look, I'm, you know, I, I, I support you. I want you to do this. It's them. But look, go in peace. Please go back to that land that I gave you. Don't make them mad. All right. Achish has everything in his, himself that he is thinking about uh, in, this, in this exchange. Yeah. 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 It, yeah, it would have had to have been a very powerful descent. And, and then, you know, you've had a long time. I mean, he's had a good while for David to be there and for David to earn that trust over the course of a year's time uh, and all of that. So he certainly uh, believed every bit about what David. Now, so there you have Achish's stuff. But I just am puzzled at David's comments back to him. Why wow, was he? Two pa- mm-hmm. But, but, here's David. Achish just told him, you know, a little while ago, you're going to go fight with me. Dave started marching. He's sending him back. The whole time that this is me, and I'm David, I'm going, I got to find a way out of this. I got to find a way out of this. I got to find a way out of this. Here's this man telling him his way out. And he doesn't go, hallelujah, king. Oh, man, that's really sorry to hear. Really sorry to hear that. But I, I guess, I guess we'll go back. He doesn't do that. He goes all in. I mean, he just, he pushes all the chips, you know, across the table over here. And, and, and he says, he says to him, but, in verse 8, but what have I done? Asked David. What have you found against your servant? He's already told him he hadn't found anything against your servant. Um, uh, from this day until now, why can't I go and fight against the enemies, as Brenda just said, of my Lord the King? Now, I would have to agree with Jim. I think David is being stupid right here. And he is putting on an immense amount of theater. Huh. Yeah, he's like, he just, because Achish is going up to him like, uh, it's like if you're going to fire somebody, you don't know if they're going to shoot you later, you know, and you're thinking, <laughs> yeah, you blame it on corporate, you know, yeah, you know, you're going up saying, listen, I've always thought you were the best employee ever, but you know, that district manager is them, uh, that's what he was doing, and for David to have just turned around and said, oh man, no problem, we'll go back, he would have thought, hmm, something's not right. Uh, something's not right here. But also, isn't it true? When you lie, all right, and you get yourself so far down into that lie, you best keep playing the part. And that's exactly what's happening here. David had boxed himself in earlier. He, David's good. Okay? You're talking about deceiving? David's good. He has deceived this king to be in his just eating out of his hand. This shows you a little aspect. You know, David, God said, This is a man after my own heart. We put David up here, and he is worthy to be up there. He's a great man. All right, but I am telling you right now, he's good. And, and he's showing you right here that he knows how to play this game. He had to finish this thing out, but he had 
he, had, it, he, it, he is to blame for having been in the circumstance that he is sitting at right now. He, do, but I do ask here, um, do you feel David would have fought against the Israelites? Yeah, I, I don't feel that David would have by any means have fought against the Israelites. I just don't know what he would have done had Achish been like, oh, if you feel that strongly about it, I'll go back and lobby about them for some more. Maybe we'll get you in. And then he would have started eating words, you know, like, well, no, no, no. I didn't really mean it. Um, but that's the... That, that had, had he been forced to do it, then he may have tried to retaliate, you know, like that, getting, hitting him from behind, and then he possibly could have been killed, lost a lot of lives of his men. It would have turned out very, very tragic and, and ugly. Um, but don't you see David running the risk, though? The more he talks, the more, he, the more he's putting himself out there, the more in trouble he's getting, you know? He, he, he keeps playing around with fire. What are you going to say, Earl? Oh, the Philistines had a major army. Yeah, just like the Israelites did. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that they had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, but their army, their army was far. I, I, it was far greater. I mean, it was it was thousands. I mean, Saul was taking contingents of three thousand people, and then he had the full army. It it would have been. It was, it was of hundreds and of thousands. That was the regiments. Yeah. It says units of hundreds and thousands. Yeah. Uh, hundreds they had multiple thousands, thousands and thousands, but, it, but it, it, they would have easily, easily put a hurting on David's 600 men. There's no doubt about that. What were you going to say, Earl? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. God's trying to get out of this mess he's in. Yeah. That God is the God is trying to you know save David from himself. Yes. We're yeah. Have to yeah. When you look at these 11 verses, it seems like, ah, not much to see here. The last stuff I put in your notes is what I'll submit to you is the applicable stuff for you and I today. That whenever we go our own way, we typically will find ourselves in situations where we have to make impossible choices. When we're going by our own understanding, we're leaning on our own understanding and we're doing things our own way, we haven't consulted God and we haven't consulted wise counsel, every time, I know for me, I'm sitting there stuck between a rock and a hard place is the, is the nicest way I can put it. You know, Either way you go, it seems like it may be a perilous circumstance you know, for what you're doing. And you have to then say, well, I had to do the lesser of two evils. You know, I had to, you always put yourself in a situation where you're going, well, they're both bad, but I got to do this, this lesser one. But, you know, in those moments uh, where we have really got ourselves in bad, bad situations, and the last question I ask, doesn't God always provide us a way out? He, I mean, he does it almost every time. Sometimes he lets you just go on a little bit because he knows you're hard-headed. But so many times when we have put ourselves there, He's still in the nick of time right when we're about to make the really stupid decision that is going to just be utter destruction. He comes in with, uh, with, with that scapegoat uh, or, or whatever and, and, and gives us a way out. And I can, I can tell you he's done that for me. He does that for you. But 
those are times that we, he ought not have to do that. He, he shouldn't do it. We don't deserve that. And that's where Christ died for us. But God is continuously active in our lives to where he keeps having to save us from ourselves and stop us from making, you know, ignorant decisions and all of those things. And I can tell you, there's a sect of people that believe that God just got this ball rolling and he's been sitting back on vacation for the, uh, all, all of this time. I can tell you right now, I know that's not true. And I'm thankful that it's not true because if he was not still, even though he'd done everything for us in sending his son to die, if he was not still active every day and, and, and interceding, and, and Christ is interceding for us and the Holy Spirit is there, we, would, we would just wouldn't make it. We wouldn't make it. And David, this epitomizes what we do every day. We get ourselves in predicaments because we've put God over here and said, you know, I'm going to get out in front of him. I'm going to do it my way. But he's always got to be the one to come in there and save the day or else we were fixing to be ruined. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, that the question, what I would say. That's right. Yeah. Th- look, the Bible from Genesis to Revelation doesn't get the story doesn't play out like that without God orchestrating those events uh, across human history. We think, well, our free and we I believe in free will. Uh, I certainly do. Uh, I, I believe that that we have choices. Uh, in the matter and that God has given us that that rope but we don't have enough free will to just blow his plan out of the water and the end won't happen the way it's written you know we don't have that kind of and God was never ever ever going to allow David to mess up enough that he was not going to be king okay and that's where I've told people before if you're just a free will person and you don't think that God is not predestining and orchestrating you know, things at times, I promise you, from the time Samuel anointed David to be king, this boy was going to be king of Israel no matter what. Okay, God had that set in place. And you see here where David was getting himself in some predicaments and God steps in and he does that throughout human history. And that's, that's the only reason, I'm going to leave you with this, that's the only reason Romans 8, 28 is even true. God works all things for the good, all right, because he's going to take all of our perilous situations and our choices And then he comes in and he takes that stuff and he molds it together. And mosaic, if you want to use that analogy or whatever. And it's beautiful at the end. But where I don't want to be is I don't want to be okay with messing up and for him to be cleaning up after me. He doesn't take too kindly to that. I can promise. You don't get no jewel as he's having to come and sweep up after you all the time. Our goal should be that we're listening to him, we're seeking his advice, we're applying that advice, and we're doing it right the first time. That's the standard. And that's where grace comes in. That's why Paul said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin so that grace may abound? No. You don't need to sin because you know God's going to get you out of it because I can promise you, you're not saved if you have the attitude that I'm just going to mess up and God's got my back. He's going to clean it up after anyway. That is not the behavior of a born-again, regenerated, Holy Spirit-filled, saved person. Okay? Because whenever God had to come behind me and clean something up, boy, the conviction of the Holy Spirit would hit you so bad and you were just so, you're thankful. Okay? But you, you're sad because you know you let God down. All right? Uh, and, and, and that will show you to me whether or not the Holy Spirit is really dwelling in you 
Uh, because if you just move on, I ain't no big deal. I'm going to keep messing up. Mama's going to clean it up for me, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, that's, that's not the way you want to be. David, as you'll see, he's going to make other mistakes. But the man has a heart, the man that gets God deals with him throughout the scriptures that we have. And you're going to see him into some very broken times, times where he repents, times where he just would rather, you know, die because of things that's going on in his life. He's a really, really human person. But again, as we looked at Samuel, and we're going to be transitioning into uh, looking at uh, David, and, uh, and, and Saul's going to be finished up here in a little bit. Uh, but this is a really, really deep chapter uh, in just reminding us that the, the Holy Spirit guides our steps. Stay with him. Stay with him. And everything is going to be just fine. But when you veer off, you know, it may get turbulent, but there is a peace, and there is, I, I'm just so enamored, I guess is, is, a, is the best word I can come up with, at the love God has for me, that he would do that over and over and have that level of forgiveness and love for me when I don't deserve it. And when I talk Sunday about love and falling out of love and letting your love grow cold, aren't you glad God's love never grows cold for us? Okay, and that should fuel us to keep on going in those moments to where the flame seems to be going out. Just know that God, he's there. We're batting on his team, and we're going to be okay. All right, let's pray. Father God, I do praise you, and I thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word tonight. And Lord, as we look at uh, this chapter, Father, it's easy. Uh, and it was easy for me, uh, Lord, as we were studying through these, just to look at this as, oh, just a, a really quick uh, 11 verses that we could hit through, but Father, just uh, the, the immense amount of truth coming from every syllable of your word, uh, Lord, just penetrates uh, through our hearts and minds, Lord, as we identify in our own lives uh, with the circumstances uh, of people like David and what he's done, and Father, we try to think about how we're living and, and what we're doing and decisions that we're making, and uh, Lord, and we can learn uh, from, from what your word is telling us and we can apply it to our lives and, and we can live in a way that is more pleasing and more honorable to you because uh, of, of learning from uh, David's mistakes, learning from our own mistakes in, in our lives, Lord. Lord, I, I, I just thank you so much uh, that you love us to a degree that we are just learning about every day. We can't even grasp it, but you love us so much uh, that even when we don't deserve it, that you're continuously uh, uh, saving us and continuously uh, helping us uh, get out of perilous circumstances in our life, uh, Lord. And you shouldn't have to do that. Uh, and, and so, Father, we pray that our, we can go through our path of sanctification, that we can uh, grow in our knowledge of you, that we can, our minds would be renewed, Lord, that our strength uh, would, would be uh, increasing, that, Father, that we could resist temptations, uh, that we could not be looking uh, at the things of this world, but we could keep our eyes on you as much as we could humanly muster, uh, and that, Father, that we could lead lives that are pleasing and honorable to you, uh, Father, and the, that would be as best we can to be worthy of the sacrifice uh, that you've made for every one of us. Help us, Lord, to, to live in that way as best we can. Uh, Lord, forgive us where we fail you, uh, and we do that so many times. And Lord, help us to not just take advantage of that and take it for granted, uh, but Lord, to learn. Go with us as we leave this place tonight. Keep us safe, uh, Father God, and uh, bring us back on Sunday as we come here to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.